In this video, we're gonna talk about the secret to tennis offense. And it all comes back to what can you see? We're gonna illustrate that right now with a GoPro. You're gonna see the point of this in a second. I'm gonna begin standing on the baseline and we have kind of a target over there, which is Kevin. He's in the middle of no man's land. And we're gonna do a couple of experiments to see what our position has to do with what's available to us. So from here on the baseline, for me, I'm six feet tall and please try this at home. Stand in the middle of the baseline, look over the net, not through the net, but over the net and see how much of the court you can see on the other side. I can see none of it. The net is totally in the way. I can look through it and see Kevin's feet, but if I look over the net, I can't see any of it. And so you can see that right here on the GoPro angle. I'm holding it right about chest height. You can see clearly that none of the court is accessible. So that means if I wanna hit a ball that hits Kevin's feet, I can do that, but the ball has to come up first and then come down. I cannot directly attack at Kevin's feet. This is really critical for those of you who are doubles players. So if I move and I come into no man's land, now from eye height, I'll, I'll hold the GoPro right up at eye height, I can see maybe three feet inside the baseline if I look over the net. I still can't quite see Kevin's feet. So that means if I'm approaching, Kevin's in no man's land, and I hit a volley that's up at shoulder height, I still can't directly hit at Kevin's feet. I can hit his feet, but I've got to skim the ball over the top of the net and then use gravity a little bit to have the ball come down, and that's totally possible, but I still cannot yet attack directly at Kevin. A great drill to practice from this part of the court is to do a no man's land and no man's land rally. And it's really critical here to hit the ball cleanly, keep an open racket face. So many tennis players as they transition try to square the racket up to hit a more offensive shot or a higher quality shot, the way that they think about hitting a good shot, and they end up making a lot of mistakes into the net. So I strongly recommend you practice from no man's land, rallying back and forth if you want to be good at all at transitioning forwards. So let's go forward a little bit closer up to the service line, and you'll see from the GoPro angle that a whole bunch of courts just opened up. Now I can just about see the service line. I can see all of no man's land. And so that means if I'm playing a point against Kevin and I get a ball that's at uh, shoulder height, I can now start to hit right at Kevin's feet. And so now I start to have some geometrical advantage over Kevin by getting a high ball. Now it's critical to point out that even from this position, let's say that Kevin hits me a, a shot at waist height and I'll hold the GoPro here. Let me see what I can see, nothing. <laughs> so from here, this is why feel and touch is so important. I have to open the racket up. From here at, at waist height, I can't hit directly to the other side of the court at all. I have to clear the net and then have the ball fall onto the other side. This is why we work so hard with our students to get them to be soft and open the racket up because if Kevin hits me anything waist height or below, I can't hit directly at his side of the court. So a great drill to practice this is to rally back and forth service line to service line. And anything that's up above the height of the net, you can practice being firm with, back to your partner. Anything below the height of the net, you have no choice. You have to open the racket up and you have to be soft. If I open the racket up and I'm firm, that's when the ball pops up and it gives your opponent a chance to attack. All right, last position. Let's come on up to halfway between the service line and the net. And if I hold the GoPro at eye height, you can see now most of the court is available to me. I can see probably halfway between the net and the service line. And so now it's pretty easy for me to directly attack. Again, critical for you doubles players. Kevin, come on up to the service line. So if I'm in the middle of a doubles exchange, now I can start to attack at Kevin's feet from this position if I make contact above the height of the net. James, let's go back real quick. From the service line, just two or three steps away at uh, shoulder height, I can't see Kevin's feet anymore. So taking these two or three steps, I just took three steps forwards, now Kevin's feet are totally in view and now I have the ability to attack. This is why your coach at home is always yelling at you to close in and get closer when you're playing doubles. The really, really critical variation on this is if Kevin gets the ball low to me. Once I get down to waist height, you can see through the GoPro view here that I can't see his feet any longer. So as the ball gets lower, I have to be softer. I have no choice, unless I don't mind popping the ball up to Kevin, but I don't want to do that. And so as the ball gets lower, I've gotta be softer. 
So a great drill to practice this is to have your partner back on the baseline on the other side and you camp out halfway between the net and the service line and practice receiving higher balls that you'll be firmer with and you can actually set up targets to practice putting those away but anytime your partner rallies the ball low to you, that's when you go back to your partner, open the racket up, and be soft and controlled with it to keep the rally going. So it's a great dynamic way to work on both firmness and offense and softness and control. So do these drills, it will help you. Hopefully this illustration really opened your eyes up and helped you see what you can see from your racket's perspective when you play your points. And I'm looking forward to hearing how it's going to help your game. Make sure to give this video a like and comment down below. Let us know what you think.